columns, pillars. Mr. Duke himself has made North Carolina a very special place with the Duke Endowment. Well, Bill Lee was a good friend, of course, and that uh, means a lot in comparison with all the other things that you can say about a fellow. Buildings, builders. Charlotte has been too quick to tear down its history. Part of it is we're growing so fast. If there's one thing that seems to me to kind of characterize the region, it is this entrepreneurial, um, positive business influence on the area. Past, future. I don't think we can ever go, go forward unless we know about our background and where we came from. To be able to uh, capture some aspect of his personal characteristics, his, his strength, his integrity, his intelligence as a part of leadership and to use that as a way of building the as, as much as you can the similar leadership characteristics in uh, the next generation of people in this community appealed to me a great deal. The Duke Mansion and the Lee Institute represent the best in leaders of our past and our best hope for the future. The Duke Mansion, one of our most landmark historic homes, gracefully and charmingly demonstrates the quality of life for our region. It continues its role as our official guest house. The Lee Institute is designing programs that are going to help us face our two greatest challenges. The first is regionalism. We're not accustomed to working together community to community. And the second challenge is that our leadership paradigm in the future will have to embrace all the different voices in the community, and the Lee Institute is helping us do just that. I just love history, and I don't know anything more beautiful in Charlotte's history than the Duke Mansion. Now there is new hope to save this priceless treasure and to give it a useful life as an historic inn and meeting place. Built in 1915 in the new neighborhood of Myers Park, the house was beautiful. But it was in 1919, when James Buchanan Duke bought the home, that its historic significance was guaranteed forever. Duke, at that point, lived in New Jersey and wanted his daughter to get back to the southern roots of the family. And so he came down to Charlotte and bought a house and expanded it into a little cottage for her, about 50 rooms, and, uh, and put money into this power company that was originally called Southern Power, that became today's Duke Energy, which is the, one of the 10 largest energy firms in the United States. To the immensity of the house itself, Duke added an opulent display of fountains, adding to the grandeur. On Sunday afternoon, that was our Sunday ride, was to go out to see the Duke Mansion. And it was a beautiful place. The old home is beautiful, and, and of course the fountains were the attraction of everything at that time because we had never seen a, a fountain and much less one like that that was so big. With the mansion's new community mission, Mrs. McCauley returned to the Duke Mansion, but this time as an honored guest celebrating her 90th birthday with family and friends. Duke's most lasting legacies, including Duke Power Company, Duke University, and the Duke Endowment, took shape at the mansion. In fact, in 1924, Duke gathered with his friends in the solarium to write the document that created the Duke Endowment. Electricity changed our region, but Duke's greatest legacy is the endowment. At Mr. Duke's death, the mansion began its challenging journey towards permanent protection. In 1929, Martin Cannon purchased the home, named it White Oaks, and began the great tradition of the house operating as the official guest house for the region. When he died, the obituary said, Mr. Modesty, and he did so much for the town. Everybody adored him, and we did too. In 1951, the Leinbergers, a textile family from Belmont, purchased the house and made a showplace for antiques and art. In 1966, the mansion suffered a major fire. The Leinbergers spent the next years painstakingly restoring this community treasure. The Leinbergers, like the Cannons, tried to protect the house, this time by leaving it to the Duke Endowment. My family, mother and daddy, always wanted it to be used for the community because it's a resource that should be used. 
the Duke Endowment realized that it could not operate the magnificent home and leased it to the Junior League as a community meeting place. The plan met neighborhood resistance and eventually was abandoned. The Duke Mansion was turned into condominiums and passed from owner to owner. In fact, Dee and Rick Ray, the founders of Raycom, were planning on purchasing a condominium when instead they decided to save the whole house. So the house is a symbol, and it's a symbol for Charlotte. And we must preserve more in the city of Charlotte and in other cities to make sure that we do not lose our past. The Ray spent several years restoring the house to a home for a single family. But the Rays, like the Cannons and the Leinbergers before them, knew the heritage of the Duke Mansion belonged to the community and not just their family. So in 1996, a nonprofit was created by Duke Power and other community leaders to preserve and protect the mansion as a historic inn and community gathering place. Welcome to the Duke Mansion. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. In this new role, while the beautiful building has been saved, the real significance of the effort to protect the Duke Mansion is saving its spirit and legacy. Now, with the support of its neighbors, the Duke Mansion is thriving once more. People enjoy this unique place and come here to work together, celebrate special occasions, or simply spend the night in this elegant historic inn. The Duke Mansion also joined the neighborhood in a partnership to save another historic house. The Tees House is more than 100 years old and is now used as the offices for the operation of the mansion and the Lee Institute. To be there and to see the life in the house and to know that it was going to have a purpose with the Lee Institute and leading the way in educating new leaders. To celebrate and encourage Bill Lee's tradition of civic leadership, the Lee Institute was established in 1997. The mission of the Lee Institute is to create a place and a process for individuals, organizations, and communities to resolve issues collaboratively. Our region is growing and changing rapidly. The dramatic population growth has led to a change in civic leadership from the more traditional style exemplified by Bill Lee. The leadership dynamic has changed since his days of leadership. Uh, it is definitely a more collaborative, a need for more collaborative leadership today than, than the, I guess some people say, the good old boy network. I never felt like that's the way he operated. It was more of a collaborative style and, and he he understood consensus building. The flagship program of the Lee Institute is the Charlotte Region Chapter of the American Leadership Forum. Each year, 20 or so leaders are selected from across a 14-county region surrounding Mecklenburg and spanning North and South Carolina. ALF struck me as being a virtually unique gathering of very diverse people who were already in leadership roles. I think the most important thing I've gotten out of ALF is the relationship I've built with people throughout the region that I can pick up the phone when we need to collaborate on something between communities and work to get it done. I felt like meeting and networking with others in the region would be helpful for me in my job, but also personally enlightening. The Lee Institute is also working with other organizations to help build community through dialogue and collaboration. I'd like to see the Y as sort of a community hub. I think ultimately the goal is to protect the social fabric of the community, and I think that really is Lee's mission and our mission. Better information can help us tackle complex community issues. The Lee Institute is the perfect group, really, to ask the questions and to get the information. We just want kids to be better prepared for school because research shows that school success really determines a person's success all the way through adulthood. We've been fortunate to have a great tradition of community leaders. Now we can celebrate and honor those of our past while we help foster a new generation. The history of this place, the families that have lived here, what they did to build the community, to build the South as it emerged from uh, poverty of 100 years ago, uh, has been uh, vital to the growth of the new South. 
the emergence of the textile industry, the electric uh, utilities, the manufacturing generally is represented right here in this house and it just should not be lost. And I think I can speak for the, almost the entire family. There's a great sense of pride, a great uh, sense of excitement. Uh, if there was anything to, to have his name attached to, I'd much prefer it, we'd much prefer it to be a leadership institute than say a power plant or a bridge or a highway because he embodied leadership in everything he did.